Hi everyone, in this opening video to the bonus chapter, I would like to share my general render settings that I'm using in the Blender latest versions. And by latest, I mean basically everything from 2.9 upwards. So I obviously change to the Cycles rendering engine, change the device to GPU when I'm on my Windows workstation with the Nvidia graphics card. And for the viewport settings, I copy the upper value and I type 512 as the render setting. Uh, this seems to be working the best in general for me. In the denoising settings, I enable both denoisers and I switch to optics on my workstation. But when I send the rendering to the external render farm, I switch to the open image denoise for the final render because most of the external render farms do not support optics. So yeah, you have to switch it. And for my macOS, uh, workstation, I use the opt open image uh, denoise here in both inputs. A little tip here, um, if you're getting the rendering artifacts with the lower settings here, try using different uh, options as the final render because they seem to be processing the final image in a bit different ways and sometimes this might eliminate the uh, bugs that you're getting. Uh, you might notice I also skipped the adaptive sampling settings. These are added uh, to one of the latest, these were added to one of the latest Blender versions and they speed up the rendering, but you also have to spend some time adjusting them and seeing the results. So to be honest, I, I really did a lot of renderings since I released the course and I never used those settings. The denoiser itself speeds up things so much that this barely matters in my opinion right now. So in the advanced settings, I also leave everything by default. Within the light paths, I increase the default diffuse and glossy values to six. I use the clamp value of nine as a default here. And if I get muddy colors, then I come here and readjust this. And for the caustics, I disable the reflective and refractive options, both of them. For the filter glossy, if I'm getting some fireflies, hot pixels within the image, I come back and try to readjust those settings. For volume and hair, I'll leave everything by default. Now, within the simplify, this is a very handy thing. I, I probably mentioned it already in the uh, core version of the course, but still, if you're running out of the VRAM memory, really try to change this texture limit to any of those two values. Even for the high resolution renderings, this works pretty well. And it just, Blender just scales down all the textures to this value. Sometimes you might not even know that you have some heavy images in your project file and this will take care of them. Um, moving on for the motion blur, I'm only using it uh, when I do animations, obviously, and sometimes for the external renderings when I want to moving uh, when, when I want to blur a moving object like a car. Um, I usually go maximum with the shutter. Sometimes I even go to the values such as four or five or three, depending how much blur I want to have in my still frame. For animation, I just never exceed the value of two. Um, for the film, I just use the transparent option when I want to do the post-production in 2D editing software. And you can see we have the transparent glass setting as well. This means that, for example, when you have a balcony with the glass panels and you would like to add an image behind those glass panels, this will also render this glass shader as a transparent one. Um, within the performance, I change the tile size to 400. When I use the HD resolution here, this seems to be working the best for me. For the acceleration structure, I leave everything default. And for final render, I always use the persistent images that just speeds up the re-renders a lot. And I usually you've used the save buffers disabled now because it seems to be making the render update window um, not showing the results, the render progress. But if I want to save the VRAM memory and I know the rendering already looks final and it's good, then I just turn it on. Uh, for the viewport, this is also very handy. If you want to speed up your real-time viewport preview and you have a heavy scene, 
just use any of those settings. The lower you go, uh, the lower resolution you will have in the viewport here. But this is very useful when you just want to readjust the illumination, need to have a quick preview on the general mood of the image. Um, yeah, this speeds, speeds up things a lot. And everything else I just leave as it is. For the color management, we don't have any changes here, but I'm actually trying not to re uh, to uh, I'm trying not to adjust this as much as I used to do in the past, especially since I started doing more post production directly in Blender. So I'm gonna get back onto this topic in the next videos in the bonus chapters. And for now, thank you for watching. Thank you guys for watching. This video is part of my interior visualization course in Blender, which you can watch for free on YouTube. All the necessary details and link to the full playlist can be found in the video description. If you want to support what I do and access all of the 3D files used in this course, plus Blender ready interior setups and over 2000 Blender exclusive 3D models, just visit the Chocofort store and learn more about our subscription plans. Again, thanks for watching and I see you soon.